is Chris from the Parks Joe here with episode 6. My main website, Parksy Webseen, has done over 600 interviews, and I'm so stoked to be able to say I've done that. I've been writing this website for over 15 years now, almost 15 years, and I'm so stoked that I've reached this milestone. But on today's show, I've got two awesome interviews. I've got two people that I've known for a while who have interviewed on the website and given a lot of love. First of all, first of all, is Julie Dixon. She's from Australia. She's a TV host, presenter, actor, producer. Then we got talented American actor, model, Caitlin Thomas. We did that on Skype. It's a great show, so sit back and enjoy. This is Chris from the Parks you Show here. It is a very nice Friday afternoon. We're here with the very talented Julie Dixon, who I've known for a while now. She's kindly given her time to chat today for probably getting the next episode of the Parks Show. So, how are you doing and what have you you've been up to recently? You've been very busy, so. Hey Chris, and thanks for having me on the show. It, um, it is a, a bit of a cold Melbourne day today. Um, I've been pretty busy lately, um, more so on the producing front of things. Um, my partner and I um, have a production company, Isha Film, and um, we've been working on a number of um, feature film projects which we've got sort of in development and we're ready to go into production with two of them um, between the end of this year and the beginning of, of next, so 2016. So that's sort of keeping me very busy. Although I started um, in acting many, many years ago, um, mainly on stage, I sort of then moved into film from there. Love film acting, it's one of my number one passions, but um, I sort of fell into the producing side of things, which I found um, I really, really enjoy. Um, just the the challenges that that come up when you're actually producing producing films. Um, it's um, it's it's an interesting journey, and it's um, it's not an easy one, but one I really enjoy. So um, yeah, so that's sort of that's sort of what I've been up to lately. So how is that different producing to acting for you, being um, behind the scenes? It's, it's sort of, it's hard to balance both because a lot of the times, a lot of the projects that I'm producing, I'm actually acting in. And it's one of these things that I've sort of started doing. Um, because the industry is quite tough being an independent actor, a lot of people are trying to do it. There's so much competition out there and Australia just doesn't really have a huge amount of work available. I'm a true believer in if the work's not there, create your own. Um, so I guess I'm very much in a, an extremely fortunate position where we do have a production company that I can then source scripts and we can and look at what's going to work and um, I can then cast myself in in a role as well as come on as a producer. Balancing the both can be a little bit um, difficult. So what I try and do is um, follow all the get all the as much of the producing stuff done as I can first up, be as organised as that as possible, and then um, then find some time, pass the rest of it on to Lucas and then find some time to actually focus in on my character. Um, producing is a different world, it's, um, it's very hard, it's hard to find good producers. And I'm in no way saying that I'm fantastic at it, but it's, um, it's definitely something I'm learning every day and I find that every single day I'm reading, watching videos, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts and just constantly trying to keep up with the industry trends and, um, and learning sort of what we can do better to, to succeed within the Australian film industry. So how do you think like social media and things like YouTube are helping the Australian industry where getting the word out for projects and cause in the old days you'd have to you'd have to know someone about a role or do like casting calls and like the, the rags but social media has done a lot of help for getting roles out there. How does that help you? Social media I find is a, a very powerful tool if used correctly. Um, things have changed a lot in the social media scape. It's another thing that I'm highly involved in and um, learn a lot about is social media. Um, I build websites, I run all of our pages and keeping up with the trends and keeping up with what's actually happening within social media um, is sometimes a full-time job. Um, it can be very beneficial to um, the likes of a, um, a film company or film producer or directors, um, actors. Um, you've just got to be able to utilise it properly and I think Facebook's making it a little bit more difficult now to sort of get your post seen because you've got to sort of pay for that platform. Um, I find Twitter's fantastic, everyone's sort of on Twitter um, and you can access a lot of people through that. 
But I think um, social media, if you're going to use it, don't just focus on one platform. You've really got to focus on being across the board on as many platforms as possible so that you're reaching a wide audience. So if you've got the time to be able to dedicate to social media, um, fantastic and it is a great way of getting word out about your projects and casting calls and and things like that but it's not the only thing you should focus on I think we need to look at the more traditional ways of actually getting our words out about the film imagine the way I look at it is if imagine if social media died tomorrow what would you do then to promote your product service or yourself um, to the world and remember those avenues because they're really important so how do you know when you went to say for example the script lands in your desk how do you know if the script's good enough to go ahead with making it? Um, I think the number one thing for me, um, be it with acting or if I decide to take on a script to produce um, through Shafilm is we read the script first and if I have a personal connection with it, then I know that it's something that I'll want to produce or it's something that I'll want to act in. Um, I know a lot of actors um, not so much producers, they're very picky with what they choose and decide to take on, but actors a lot of time will take a role on just for the sake of having a credit. I don't do that. Um, I find that I have to feel an emotional connection to the story or the characters within the script before I, I decide to, to, to act in it or, or produce it. So, so that's my process, it's a personal thing and I think everyone's a little bit different. Lucas may read a script and he might love it and have a totally different view on it than what I will. So um, yeah, so I guess that's sort of my process. So you've also do, you do hosting, you do a lot of on-screen hosting for companies. How did you get involved in that? Um, yes, I do. Um, top of acting, I do um, a lot of presenting. So um, presenting for me started back in Adelaide, actually. Um, another one of those things that if the work's not there, how do I um, make it happen for me? So for me, the journey that I took was actually through community television. Um, I went in, just literally off the bat, walked into their office one day and said, I would really love to have a go at presenting one of your shows. Have you got anything um, available that I can sort of have a go at? And straight away, um, they got me in the seat um, on a show called The Notice Board. And I ended up doing, I think, three or four seasons of that. And I have to be honest, it was one of the most terrifying things of my life. Um, they strapped me with a lapel mic and it wasn't recorded live to air, but they didn't cut. It was it pretty much might as well have been live to air. And I had to come up with these questions and ask um, these questions to these guests that came on the show. And I swear to God, you would have heard my heart beat through the lapel mic. <laughs> um, so that's how I started with the presenting. And from there, I really wanted to do a lot more. So, um, you know, I've looked at avenues of obviously producing my own shows that I can host um, and air, which is one that's still on the back burner at the moment that I'm working on. And then from that, um, we were getting sort of in corporate inquiries through our film production, so we decided that we would set up Shotgun Media, which is the corporate side of Shafilm. Film. Um, and through that, we get clients that need presenters. And another fortunate um, thing that I guess I've found myself in that I've worked towards is been able to put myself forward for these jobs. So, um, yeah, once again, creating my own work. So I keep it very tight knit within within our business. Um, and it works works really well. So, yeah. this like I know you guys have done crowdfunding. Do you think it works, or is it, or do you think it's become that everyone's doing it now that the sort of it's become the kiss of death? That I mean, once when you, people put out a really good project and they have this idea and they some, and you get money now, everyone's like, yeah, we've got this move. We need funding, and no one's doing the traditional of trying to get investors and trying to do the hard. So yep, they're going yep. Hey. We're making this movie, fund me. A really good question um, in regards to crowdfunding, Chris. Um, something that actually I have been spending a lot of time researching over this past week. Um, you're right in saying that crowdfunding is one of those things where everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. A fantastic platform um, that's evolved for independent filmmakers and people that want to get their projects off the ground. But there is a lot of work behind a crowdfunding campaign if you want to do it successfully. Um, I've spent hours um, just this week just comparing um, maybe 20 different successful crowdfunding campaigns and 20 different unsuccessful ones and looking at what they've done right, what worked for them, what, um, what things they're using to sort of get the word out there. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those things where you've really got to, it becomes a full-time job to crowdfund something successfully and a lot of work goes into it and yes, it can pay off, but 
again, I do have a sour, um, a sour point within me that, that gets really annoyed when I see a shitty crowdfunding campaign and people are just asking for money and they're not actually putting in the effort to actually be worthy of getting that. It's one thing saying, I've got a film, it's fantastic, please give me money. But for me, as from a producer's point of view, if I was ever putting money into a crowdfunding campaign, I'd want to see what they're doing on their end to actually prove to me that they're worthy of, of the money. So um, we will be looking at crowdfunding campaigns for our future projects, but I can tell you that um, I think they'll be pretty amazing and I'm looking at ways to to, um, to create crowdfunding campaigns that are, are worthy of, of people's donations. So what is next for yourself? What does the rest of 2000 15 Heaven store for Julie? Uh, 2015 obviously for me um, is going to be really busy with the pre-production of um, a feature film that's coming up. We've actually got a feature film coming up called The Run um, which is going to be um, exciting. Um, you can read more about that on our website. Um, obviously more of the development phase and pre-production of Redback which we're hoping to shoot next year. We will be doing um, some promotional shoots for that near the end of the year. Um, overseas trip for, for our corporate work, a lot of corporate work um, and I've got a couple of short films coming up as well um, which is which is great to sort of keep the ball rolling but um, yeah apart from that just keeping, keeping really busy and just trying to do as much as I can. I think I think with me a lot of my time is spent sort of looking at ways that I can do things better. Um, I don't believe in just sitting within the minority. Um, there's always ways to improve and, and to do better and um, a lot of people shy away from that because they don't want to be seen as um, as being full of themselves or um, pretending to be something they're not. We're in the entertainment industry. Um, we're meant to shine and I think that for me, I guess the end of this year will be just doing more and more things to, to show that, you know, I, I do shine and um, that we're, we're doing our best to sort of try and make something within the, within the film industry that we've got here. Cool. I've got two more questions for you. Sure. What have you seen recently that you have really enjoyed that's inspired you? Ah, oh. um, something that I've seen recently that's inspired me would have to be, um, I, I signed up to Netflix <laughs> and um, to start with I was like, oh, I don't know about this and then I started watching some shows. TV has never been a huge part of my life, I love films um, and I found that with films lately I've been finding that I'm not getting as much from them that I used to. So sitting down and binge watching um, a lot of Netflix um, TV shows um, has been fantastic and I have to say I've watched numerous ones but the one that I'm watching at the moment is Sense8 and it's on Netflix and um, to me I find that show really inspiring as to sort of the storyline, the messages that it has and just the way that they use cameras and shots and the way that it's edited and the different different stories within within the show that all sort of come together and interconnect. It's, it's intelligent intelligent storytelling and um, for me that's inspiring. I think that um, intelligent stories are far and few between so when I see something like that um, yeah I, I really love it so I guess that could be there's probably numerous other things but that sort of is the first thing that sort of springs to mind so. And what is your go-to movie that you'd love to watch when you need to feel inspired? My go-to movie when I need to feel inspired. Oh, I'm gonna have to think about that one. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, okay, my go-to movie when I need to feel inspired. I probably don't have one in particular. I seek types of genres that help me feel inspired. Um, so I guess if I'm looking for inspiration within a film, I tend to look for for stories that maybe have um, maybe minimal characters um, based on sort of true stories, things that tell of human human survival, human struggle and how people can take themselves from one point in their lives and they can carry themselves through to a better point in their lives. That's the sort of stories and movies I seek out whenever I'm whenever I'm looking. I mean, I watched one, um, a huge inspiration to me at the moment, another inspiration would have to be um, Reese Witherspoon. You know, she's really, um, she set up her own production company and she's seeking and sourcing stories that really do tell um, tell human, human elements, human stories. So, um, 
Wild was Wild was fantastic. I thought that was a great movie. So yeah. Cool. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much and appreciate your time and keep keep on doing the good work. Thanks for having me. No worries. And we are happy how things have gone for you so far absolutely i am thrilled i have been acting and modeling since i was about 12 years old um so you know it's definitely been a process and at this point um it's fully my career i don't have to supplement my income by having a restaurant job or anything like that so i just feel to get to do what i love to do every day so, so, so do you think that it's been a long time coming you being able to do it as a career opposed to a lot of people? So how, did, how does it feel having campaigns or like being in roles on television or even a movie? And people recognize you. I would say on the one side, it's very humbling. I feel very blessed, like I said. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. are noticing um i feel like i've worked very hard to get to the point where i'm at today so when there's a big campaign or a tv show on and my friends are watching or noticing absolutely it feels good so how was acting different to modeling to you i Applying substitution script, um, character intentions and desires. Um, so I really keep them very separate, the modeling world and the acting world. I do do them both, but I feel like they're definitely two different games that we play. <laughs> that everybody watched. It feels a few different agencies and I've been doing this for a number of years so when something gets out there I definitely like to share it with uh, with my friends with my family with my fans so that was the show who knew 600 interviews I hope you enjoyed the show episode 7 is gonna be awesome also so sit back and keep watching out for more epoxy shows thanks for watching I'll see you again next time Special about